Hello and welcome to Reportage. This is Danish bin Nabi. Mahak Goel has come up with her powerful debut collection of poems in form of a book titled Failure to Make Round Rotis, which is published by Juggernaut Books. These poems are about day-to-day -day rebellion, resilience, and relationships of an Indian woman. Let's listen into Mahak. Explain to the viewers what this, your first novel, is all about. Right. Um, so it's a poetry collection. It is based in eight sections. It starts with childhood, then graduates to adulting, um, uh, talks about heartbreak, love as well. Um, and then finally about the dark reality of arranged marriage and uh, where we are as um, in terms of the feminist stance in India. Um, all of them are poems which have been written about my personal experiences um, from being bullied in childhood to um, and uh, these are stories I feel that most of us girls or even guys are going through because we are subjected to certain uh, gender standards that we are uh, supposed to cater to or adhere to uh, while we are growing up or even when we grow up. Let me then come to directly come to the arranged marriage. Do you yes. think that arranged marriage make good relation, mm -hmm. rather better relation between the two couples? Um, I kind of disagree, um, and also I think for me um the most surprising part is that uh, for me arranged marriage has always been kind of synonymous with forced marriage growing up i've seen most of my cousins or even friends um get married through the arranged route but in a way where um, they didn't have the agency to choose who they wanted to um, it was a uh, set up marriage by their parents or by their relatives or somebody else where uh, uh, they couldn't say no. Um, it was already, um, you know, things were already in motion long before they even met the guy or girl. Um, and this has somewhat been very strange for me. However, having said that, I feel if in an arranged marriage you do have the right to say yes or no right so um i think uh, um since childhood right i've seen most of my friends and family get married through the arranged marriage route so much so that i think for me it has become synonymous with a forced marriage where the guy and the girl i would say do not have agency in who they're marrying um and some of them have resulted in good slash beautiful marriages but some of them haven't as well and um, here they do not even have agency to leave the marriage so i feel that um arranged marriages for me is a little bit dark territory and i feel that people should be given a choice on who they want to spend the rest of their lives with but what as an author do uh, you you would tell the parents who force their uh, kids who force their ch uh, children to go for these forced marriages um i would say that uh, you know at the end of the day i feel that parents are wanting to do anything because for the kids happiness or for their daughters or sons happiness and i feel that a forcing somebody uh, or forcing someone on someone for the rest of their lives is not a very good way to begin any relationship for that matter i feel that if um it were done for me um i would completely just you know derail in terms of um lose who i am um and also during arranged marriages right um, what happens is that the roles are very set like the guy has to be the breadwinner the girl has to be the caregiver and um uh, generally uh, be the caregiver for her uh, kids and uh, uh, that is something that I have a lot of problem with. For every parent who is looking through the arranged marriage route, um, please don't force your kids. It's as simple as, okay, um, you know, if your uh, uh, son or daughter wants to become a painter or a um, writer or something else instead of an engineer or a doctor, you let them follow their path in life and I'm sure they'll do beautiful things there as well. But this education, this message, does not go to the majority of the people. It does not basically trickle down to the ground. 
So what to do about it? Because there are still majority of the parents who force their children, who force their kids to go for these forced marriages. Where the term which we now use is the marital rape happens, where they are not mentally or physically comfortable with the other partner. But how to trickle down this message on the ground? How to get the people and the parents know that forced marriages are not uh, liked by their children? I think the saddest part in all of this is that women are the flag bearers of patriarchy. Um, and it just breaks my heart every time because I feel that um, children, obviously, since they're brought up by their moms, they listen more to their moms. And since moms, um, uh, since their mothers don't have agency in anything, they've seen that while growing up they themselves feel that they also do not have agency of their lives um and the worst is that mo in most of the cases right the guy and and the girl i'll say for both of them that um they do not even know that they can say no because they have been conditioned to believe that this is the only thing that is possible for them. Um, so mother rebel in a way that, you know, she makes it okay for the children to also rebel and to lead the lives that they want to lead. Um, if they've never seen rebellion in their lives, right. Um, they can never go out and do it because, uh, as simple as, you know, everything from, uh, what they're going to eat in the morning to what they're going to read, um, to what career they're going to have is already pre-decided probably the second they're born. And if they so, do say no, and if the children do say no, all hell breaks loose. Absolutely, absolutely. The, the, um, the saddest part is, um, I mean, I'm about 30 years old right now. And I thought, you know, maybe for the generation after me, things might have gotten easier. And the number of messages I keep getting from girls and guys both that, you know, um, listen, I want to go to, uh, I'm from a tier two city, and I want to go to DU for my education or a Mumbai University or some of the top university in India. And my parents, um, feel that if I go out for education, I'll go out of their control. And that's just simply not allowed. In my in response to my first question, you use the word dark chapter. Explain for the viewers what this what do you mean by this dark chapter? Right. So for me, arranged marriages, right? Um, I feel that marriage needs to be an equal partnership between man and a woman that to a willfully willful and happy equal partnership right um the guy should equally partner with uh, the woman um he's about to marry in terms of let's say uh, in terms of the home chores the woman should equally partner in terms of uh, going out and earning for the family so i feel that that there is, should be an equal partnership in an ideal case scenario obviously um even in love marriages um there might not be an ideal sometimes the guy likes to cook sometimes the girl likes to earn etc etc right so um in any case it could be a 60 40 or a 40 60 but in most cases in arranged marriages what i see is the owners of the mental health emotional health or even the personal health of the entire family falls on the girl, whether it be the guy's parents, whether it be her own parents. So um, I kind of disagree with this entire scenario where the girl is responsible for an entire other family when she is probably the youngest of the lot. You have right in general in India, um, we do 40 years older, right? Can yeah, marry a girl yeah. who's about 20 to 23, and nobody is uh, an eyelid there, which is um, uh, which is a bad thing in itself, right? Why, why is that allowed to even happen today? Mac, you have talked in detail about the negatives of the arranged marriage, but then there are right. also cases. Maybe in majority, we don't know, we don't have any surveys done on this. Mm -hmm. But then there are also cases as far as arranged marriage are concerned, which are like uh, wonderful love stories. What about those cases? 
Um, I'm sure there are many of them, but in a situation, right, Danish today, where um, I was reading a survey about um, as of uh, 2018, there are about 20, um, uh, there are about 93% of people in India getting an arranged marriage. Uh, I'm, uh, so I was reading an article online which said that 93% of the marriages in India are arranged in india and that too not in terms of arranged where the um, i feel that arranged marriage is basically your parents or your family choosing somebody for you um, and not you choosing somebody for yourself right um with those numbers even if let's say we have um and again i don't have the numbers for this but i do feel of all the marriages um and i've seen at least 30 40 we used to live in a huge huge um you know joint family um my father has about seven brothers brothers and sisters. My mom has about three brothers and sisters. Just imagine the number of cousins. I mean, if we just invite the cousins uh, um, and their kids, um, uh, it'll be about 200, 300 people at least. Right. So I've seen so many arranged marriages till now that I feel only five or 10 percent of them are in the happy lot. But they are that because, again, uh, these are the few um, men slash women who have um who give their better halves um you know who are not that controlling um in terms of okay my wife has to do this or my husband has to do this i feel that all of us to be happy we need to be our own person without that happiness doesn't flow Matt, you are so telling I feel me. yeah 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 please go on please go on um, so um, I feel that in arranged marriages, uh, firstly, the onus of everything is on um, the girl or the guy, but they do not have control in any of that, right? Um, it is, um, it's like two, uh, it's like the puppeteer is basically telling them to do something and the puppeteers are the parents on both the sides. And uh, they are just executing things depending on the instructions given to them. Um, so it's very difficult to adapt in that scenario. I also feel that arranged marriages can also be construed as a Stockholm syndrome, where um, let's say the girl has to move out to her husband's house, um, where, you know, after a certain time, she does kind of fall in love with the guy, because it could be um again i mean it could be related to stockholm syndrome where she doesn't have a choice i feel you are telling me that 93 percent of the marriages are arranged marriages and out of these 93 percent only five to ten percent are the happy couples right at least the ones that i have seen yeah, yeah. um and the 93 percent is data that I have, the you 5 have. 10 percent is my personal <laughs> record. Yeah. It's your personal thing. What about the rest of 70 to 80 percent marriages? What What's happening in their world? Um, so I feel in arranged marriages, um, I've always seen a lot of reports saying that divorce rates, arranged marriages still work because divorce rates are um, less than, I think, 5 or 10 percent, um, according to recent studies. So therefore, they must still work. Right. Um, it sounds like a valid argument, but I think the base of this argument or the foundation is absolutely untrue, simply because in this, both the guy and the girl can't leave each other once they're married. Um, their parents have fixed this for them and they do not have any scope of getting out of the marriage, no matter how toxic, abusive, whatever it is, right? Because simply in an arranged marriage setup, the girl will have a kid within one year of marriage, right? Um, in most of the cases that I have seen. Um, and once she has the kid, whole of her life, whole of her dreams, um, wishes, happiness revolves around that particular kid that she has. Um, and she simply um, doesn't have the resources because she's not allowed to earn. Um, uh, she is the homemaker or the housewife. So once she's the house uh, homemaker, um, uh, 
she cannot earn and she cannot separate from the husband because again she doesn't want to um, she doesn't want her kid or child to grow up without a father right um again it's a very um, dark reality uh, which people might not be so comfortable in talking about but these are just the general things that i have seen while growing up like no matter how toxic or abusive the marriage is the girl cannot leave the guy but can the guy leave the girl even if it's a toxic marriage um again i think society really frowns on divorce today even today it does frown on divorce um i feel that people are um okay to leave their love marriages than arranged ones because in arranged ones right it is marriage of two families as opposed to just two people right you need to please everybody else and then somebody will come and tell you acha you do this then it'll work out oh i'm here with you therefore it will work out the parents will come um or the chachu chacha or somebody lost relatives will come and say okay we'll make it work so there's a lot of pressure and also the expectations are very minimal uh very very minimum in these arranged sort of scenarios where uh the girl just has to be uh you know just taking care of the children and uh, the guy has to go out and just earn for his family it is not necessary remember like love is not a prerequisite for arranged marriages it could be a postscript but that's also not asked for mac i must ask you this there has been a lot of talks about the women the feminine all these things their rights their emotions their well being their physical well being their everything but right. there has been absolutely no talk about what the boys what the males want why is it why is this that there are people there are males who go through emotional uh, distress who go through physical pain who go through all these things which a women goes through why there is no talk of men um because we live in a patriarchal time men have always gotten what they asked for uh, for example um, i'll give you a very simple scenario that i heard of recently and i am not a non vegetarian so i really don't know how this works but uh, um, i was having a talk about my book and uh, you know talking about the societal expectations from men and women so um, uh, there's this guy who said you know um, whenever we have a fish at home the fish head which is supposed to be the most tasty part of the fish is given to me it is never ever been offered to my sister right you already um fortunately for the guys they already sorry fortunately for the guys they already get um, um uh, the entire pie um i do understand that um there might be cases where you don't uh, there might be cases where there are uh, you know facing emotional distress but i do feel that you're already getting the fish head um and uh, women aren't even asked for it women aren't even told that you could aspire for it if we do aspire for it then we are too ambitious which is not allowed at all mac i, I mean it's not <laughs> i completely get it but then there are also cases which i know of the male of my friends right. of my right. uh, uh, male friends of my male colleagues of my male relatives who go through right. a tremendous pressure who go through a lot of things but there is absolutely. absolutely no talk about them there is absolutely no rights no seminars no debates nothing in the media about the male I think that they right. do have these uh, they also do need emotional support they also do need monetary support all sort of a support my again repeating my question why is right. this right. always about women why not about men this is okay we get the fish head but fish head does not make the life of for the heck of it there are things which obviously men need there are rights which obviously men need but then again we have been brushed under a carpet nahi ye ji ladka hai which is i am completely unable to understand why Can is it give me a couple of examples danish i would uh, love to talk about this in more depth can you give me an for example well there is a one of my friends he was in a relationship right. but again his right. uh, home his parents did not 
they separated the two and he couldn't say anything he couldn't rebel because of the the same exact things a woman a female a lady goes through but again right. then there is no talk of him likewise there right. are a number of other examples which i which i Got go it. through almost on a daily basis absolutely so that makes sense uh, uh, that makes sense i feel that somewhere due to patriarchy even my, men let, are... let me let, let me let me rephrase my question yes. there are absolutely no um, things that women do not women should not have rights they are, that's given they should have their rights but what about the men why always men has been portrayed like this powerful image of a thing and obviously they have emotions obviously they need things why people do not talk about men why always women right so i am coming from the perspective of women because i am a woman um I and i think i've seen that I, i understand that but this is in no way discounting what men go through and even in my book right i talk about the societal expectations from both men and women right um, in terms of men uh, when i say when they are about to get married the only thing that is seen there is let's say mahak, how much does he earn which car does he have mahak, etc mahak, mahak, let but me, let me tell, let me let me, right. let me let me tell you one more thing about the boys right. they are completely split between the two the wife and the mother and do you know how difficult it is for a boy it's for a male it's for a uh, male member to balance between the two because he being a uh, uh, male cannot leave any of the two because these are two pillars of this man and he has been stretched between the two this is i'm just giving you one example one simple example but i understand again, that but, yeah, in, but right. man, then again there are no talks of men as if man is like this holy um, holy sort of a thing he has no emotions he has no, he doesn't need anything i'm not discounting at all what i i do, completely get i completely as, as, get no, your point one, like, one second but i kind of disagree with you because it is almost assume that when a girl gets married she will leave her pillar which is her home for about 20 25 years whatever it is she is just assumed to leave the home and you're saying it is more traumatic for the guy <laughs> to be with the wife and the mother i mean please we're already leaving our homes we do not have any agency over there no matter and how feminist me, non feminist guy is you, it's not even in the have, same boy man we have to let me tell place. you this thing we have all respect for it that you have are leaving something of past 20 30 years given that you have absolutely all the things you want all the sympathies all the things you have we completely respect it and we have that understanding that you are leaving something and coming to a different setup given that then there are things which obviously boy needs which obviously a male needs my only point is that only thing i want to ask you and only thing i want to understand from you is that the society there are only femin- uh, feminist groups have you ever seen a male group voicing their concerns for the male members of the society absolutely no have there been any seminar about the rights of a male absolutely no have there been any article written on the males their rights their emotions why my only concern my only question is i feel sometimes myself let me give you my example i feel that i also have some rights on this why only a female i'm not saying you don't give her the rights please give her the rights please give her all the rights but at the very same end at least have some bit of consideration for males as well danish um, i just like to say here that what i'm advocating is not more rights for women at the um at the at at the case of men right it doesn't mean that if women have more rights your rights go down i'm saying equality if you have x rights exactly. then you also have x rights my so point is equality ask- my point is yeah. exactly equality i don't want want to snatch any rights from the women my Absolutely. point is but equality the, there is no talk of women but there is no talk of men men do understand me understand this thing men also do go all those all these traumas which a women go through my point my concern is there is only talk about these traumas it's about women not about the men why not about men why we do not talk about men 
my concern is only that why do we not talk about men i think because uh, somewhere down the line toxic ma masculinity is celebrated just in terms of let's say men aren't or shouldn't be able to express themselves men can't cry um, um i mean and that is what makes him a man which is completely something that i absolutely absolutely do not agree with but even just the recent movie animal right like it's just, it's it's crazy at how um things are just snowballing there and how people are just talking about it non-stop um, no matter what social media you're following etc right so um i do agree i mean feminism has never been about taking rights from men at all please um Matt, it, Matt, this is a yes. long discussion let's come back to the yes. book let's yes, come back yes. to the let's explain uh, to me how did this concept right. came into me about the book right failure to make crown rotis right yeah yeah um so for me since i was a child i still remember um, um my mom is a big feminist but my extended family whenever they used to come home and i didn't cook food or i didn't make ro rotis and this is not like me at 18 years old this is me at 5 or 10 years old right when they used to come at home i still remember my dadi used to say oh if she can't cook rotis right now how is she going to keep her husband happy and things like that right so i feel that our worth as women has been defined or directly proportional to the roundness of our rotis and do we, do uh, we mag, 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 just a quick question just to add on here do we do we need to make our mummies educate educated because this basically trickles down from grandmother to mother then absolutely. to the do we do we somewhere need that our mummies who are our mothers they should get a proper education so that these things do not crept in the mind of either a male child or a female child do we need to absolutely educate? absolutely i think it should be taught to our moms and grandmoms that cooking is a life skill which is important for both men and women and not as a skill to impress your husband right if and it were taught to अगर तुम्हें बताना नहीं आएगा तो घर पे घर पे जाके क्या बना लो एब्सोल्युटली एब्सोल्युटली so that too right um, i genuinely feel that i am and i have been able to address my thoughts like that because i had a feminist mom while growing up she said okay if my daughter is learning how to cook then my son will also and i have a brother who's one year younger to me right we're at par in everything possible he wasn't given extra rights because he's a guy um and i think that is how it should be and i think the mom is the main person who can implement this going forward i think you are a non veg person right you take non vegetarian vegetarian, vegetarian. Okay, um I, that's why yeah. yeah and does your brother also gets the head fish head to have and not you so our thing would be probably paneer um who gets go more so, so he gets a, he gets a bigger slice than you no no we get equal as much as we want to eat i um, i think uh, mahek, um, there was a very mahek, almost yeah. at every household everyone gets equal it's some houses where you get where the male partner gets the head and rest get the rest otherwise majority yes. in the majority of the houses every female be it male or a male female or a male they get equal slice of a punt glad to hear that glad to hear that and mahak let me uh, wind up this interesting discussion <laughs> about your book are we seeing any other book in the next few months Absol or in the absolutely, next absolutely absolutely i've right right i have started working on it um, already 30 40 poems in um should the fingers crossed be out next year and how many um, point, point poems in this book include 120 there are 120 poems in this one 120 and how much time yes. did it take you to compile this book um this took about 2 years the first draft was in about 6 months and then there was one and a half years of editing because again i was just like oh how do i edit this how do i find an editor uh, so all of those things that i i think the first draft needs to be written quickly and then you can go at it from there because i had a storyline i had the themes figured out i had most of the poems worked out and yeah um i think uh, after that it just all of it clicked
मैं ये मैं जानना चाहता हूँ आपसे ये जो पोएम्स का है एक जो नज्म जिसको हम उर्दू में कहते हैं हाउ डिड बेसिकली दिस कॉन्सेप्ट क्रिप्ट इन टू यू फ्रॉम विच ईयर डिड यू स्टार्ट इट राइटिंग दीज पोएम्स कब से आपको इन चीजों में इंटरेस्ट हो गया स्पेशली ऑफ द पोएट्री right so um i've always loved reading i've been a voracious reader i finish one book over a weekend um i try to read at least 50 to 100 books in a year um how, and how many books 50 to 100 at least one book per week at least um and i listen to or not and these are all fiction all, all a combination of fiction non fiction poetry everything combined um, um i got to liking poetry at a very uh, at the lowest point in my life actually went back to poetry because um i had a freak knee injury um and um i was in bed rest for about 6 months i took close my startup which was 4 years old at that time it was successful it was doing well but the doctor said either you can walk or your startup can walk so it was an easy decision for me i was the only founder for that startup so i had to close it um and uh, it took me about 6 months uh, to even start walking five steps um and then another year uh, where i was just you know training myself um and getting physiotherapy to get back on track but this was the lowest phase in my life what i realized is with fiction and non fiction you need to read the entire book but with poems i felt that if even if i read one to two poems in a day my day was made um i had a high um in terms of just how i was feeling um so i felt that poetry reached out to me during that time more than the others um and it made me feel a lot better about myself and it really did actually made me question everything i knew about um so coming from there i also thought that we need to talk about the things um, we are talking about in fiction and non fiction in poetry as well so hence uh, poetry there are there are many young people many young aspirants who are interested in poetry who want right. to make a career out of this poetry what right. what's your suggestion for those young uh, people there i have i have number of students who want their poetry to get right. published uh, to uh, form a book out of these poetries what right. how your suggestion for such young aspirants such students such readers So Danish I am a computer science engineer then I did my masters in management then I was an entrepreneur for 4 years um I have always loved reading but never written except a journal I feel in those 2 years which will literally transform my life if I can write with no background with no english literature background then I feel that anybody can write it is just an expression and the discipline that you require to keep at it and keep editing your work this will be for poetry for fiction for non fiction whatever it is you just need to keep at it complete the first draft within the 6 months and then keep working on the additions um but if i can do it i do feel that anybody um who does put their heart to it can also do it so the basic mantra is you need to keep at it don't let it go keep at it absolutely absolutely that's Max, the same for my publishing journey as well yeah that <laughs> wonderful talking to me let me hold your book once more for the audience so that it reaches maximum people the type titled failure to make round rotis published by jagannath books thank you very much mad for thank talking you. to me thank, thank you. you thank you please subscribe to our channel reportage and press the bell icon to remain updated